Hello everyone, and um, this video we're going to take a look at the actual import structure and start to, to be, kind of build on. I've had a, a number of videos that I've put on YouTube that cover the PE file format. And so we're going to use this to kind of build upon that knowledge. So if you're unfamiliar with the PE format, this probably isn't the best place to start. I would suggest going to some of those earlier videos. Um, I'll make sure to add some uh, cards or something here to link for it. Um, there is a playlist and the playlist is just going to be laid out in order. Um, so again, good place to start beginning of the playlist. Um, of course, if you're just interested in learning a little bit more about how the import works and the structure, not only within the PE file, but then, you know, start to understand what happens at runtime. That's what this video is intended to do. Now, first thing that we'll do, um, start with just a you know basic program, a sample program here. Uh, I've got two calls that are gonna be done through a library through kernel 32. That is a call to virtual alloc that allows you to allocate memory. Then there's gonna be a call to virtual free. I really don't need the second call. Um, in, in this case, it's really, you know the one API call will be enough to discuss what's important here. Um, if you're not sure what those um, what these what these APIs do, I would suggest just going to opening up your browser, typing in your favorite search engine, um, MSDN virtual alloc. That'll tell you everything, at least in terms of the official documentation. Now, the rest of this program, again, it's a trivial program. It just once it's allocated memory, writes a little bit of data there, prints out the address, uh, the data at that address before it frees it, and we're all done. Now, I used Visual Studio to compile that. As you can see here, that's already done. I'm going to kind of admit some of those details because I, I've done them quite often in previous videos. That is compile the programs. Uh, we should be able to just run this. So let's go ahead and see. There you go. It is a valid program. Um, there was the allocation base. Then it's freed. Those are the addresses because I'm incrementing and writing in four bytes, four bytes at a time. You can see those addresses are just incrementing four bytes at a time from that base address. Okay, so um, in order to call virtual alloc though, we have to import the library, import kernel 32, um, and in particular that API, that function, so that my program, when it's run, will be able to actually call it. Now, in order to start looking at that, um, I'm using the, the latest, as of the time of this recording, free version of IDA Pro. Okay, and what IDA Pro has done is, um, of course, uh, disassembled the program and then dropped us into main. So this is all of the code that you saw in Visual Studio Code um, with the call to virtual alloc, uh, the loop, the eventual call to virtual free. So not, not super interested in, in analyzing the program at this point. Of course, if you're not real familiar with IDA, uh, this is really good practice. Take programs um, that you understand, compile them, look at them in IDA, better understand what the disassembly looks like. Now, in terms of our call to virtual alloc, you can see at this address, 401021, there is a call to virtual alloc. Um, it is prefixed with this segment, DS, and then virtual alloc. Now, IDA is providing this, this sort of this overlay because it understands what function we're trying to import. If we double click on that, this will take us to this convention here where IDA has laid out what it believes, and, and in this case, very accurately so, the function itself along with the arguments and, and not only the arguments, but what those arguments represent, because this is a very common, um, you know, library function to, to import a very common function to use when, you know, writing software to, to run in the windows operating system. Um, now you'll see that this actually links to an external four byte value, right? And so this value right now is not populated. It's populated once the program, once we tell the operating system to run the program, it'll load it into memory, and then it'll resolve all of these imports for us. That's part of the, 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 you know, the loading process. Um, a, a topic that we're not gonna cover here, but it's very much related is, you know, in particular with malware, when it injects code into processes or starts them in very unconventional form where they're not going through the normal process of loading, then it has to resolve these imports somehow. And there's a lot of ways that I've come across uh, that I, or that I've seen it done. And I'm sure at some point I'll cover some videos there. Now, the other thing to take note of is where we're at in memory, right? Our program assumes, IDA assumes a default image base. Um, in fact, we can just scroll to the very beginning of the file. There's information about, um, well, yeah, you can see hashes and, and whatnot. Um, but then there is this image base. So 400,000 hex is in fact our image base. So, oops, 
There we go. Um, so this is at an offset of 14,000 hex from the image base. Okay, and then you can see that for each imported function, they're just incrementing at four byte values, right? Our virtual addresses, each you know value, each byte, each number, incrementing number represents a byte of memory. And because this was compiled as a 32-bit program, then those pointers are gonna be four byte values. So that's why we're incrementing in four byte increments. Okay, now we don't have an actual address here because we've statically disassembled this. This information is provided at runtime. Okay, to further demonstrate that, I have the program loaded up in a debugger. And what's gonna be a little bit different here, um, I'm gonna clear the command window and LM, that's just list the loaded modules. What we're seeing here is that we have a different image base. So if we want to figure out where that section that we were just looking at is actually located, then what we do is we take our image base, which is C000, right? I'm gonna be in hex mode with the calculator and we'll add the offset. Okay, now I did this last time. I missed a zero, only three instead of four. So let's just do that again. Okay, that looks better. Right, so at D4000 is that section, right? This section right here. Okay, I'm gonna use the memory window and uh, change the display format to long hex so that I can get these four byte values. And you can see now at this location are these function pointers. Um, typically when you look at the address space for a process, the libraries are loaded at higher addresses. So generally speaking, when I start seeing addresses at seven, seven, six, seven, seven, then that's probably because it's a library that was loaded during you know, the, the operating system, loading the process. And so I know it's coming from an API or, or some DLL that's loaded there. Uh, we can also use the POI. And what that'll do is if, oh, oh I didn't wanna do that. I guess it really doesn't matter. Um, that I rearrange those bytes. Okay, so then what we can do is we can just take this address and if we do a, or use the U command, that will disassemble there. And that at least just tells me what function it is, right? So here we can see we are in fact in kernel 32 library and that location is at the virtual free um, stub. So it's actually the call to virtual free. Uh, had I not messed up the bytes, you would see that this is actually the call to virtual alloc. And I don't know off the top of my head if there is an easy way to fix that. Oh, there it is. All right, so let's just copy that. You, and there we go. There's virtual alloc, right? And that makes sense because I set a breakpoint here in the execution of our program. Let's go back to where virtual alloc is called. Okay, 401021, so an image base of 400,000 hex. That means from the image base, we're at an offset of 1,021 hex, which means we just need to add that to our new image base, which is C1021, right? So there's a call. The address that it's calling to is going to dereference 1,400 hex, right? The base of that segment, the import table, which is this address, and then our debugger very nicely just tells us that, hey, this is in fact a call to kernel 32 virtual alloc. Okay, so that's the basics. Now I wanted to take this just one step further and walk you through what this looks like in the actual PE file format. So um, what we have here is o, uh, 010 or 010 editor. It's a hex editor and one of the reasons, one of the main reasons that I like it, started using it years ago, is that it has this template. So you can provide, um, there's any number of templates. I'll probably do a, a separate video on 010. So, um, you know, the most important thing is it's a hex editor that provides templates. So if we give it an executable file, a PE file, then it can, we can apply the template to it. And down below here in this template results window, it'll map out the structure of this particular file. So the first 64 bytes of a PE file is the image DOS header. If we wanted to look at those individual members of that structure, we could do that, and they're gonna be highlighted in our hex editor. So it really, it's a, I think it's a really helpful tool when you're trying to understand you know, these sort of binary files and their formats. Now, um, 
the section of the PE file that we're most interested in right now is how does the import table work? And if you expand the image NT headers and then the image optional header, and then scroll down to the bottom of the image optional header, there'll be an array of image data directories. Those structures are always there, they're always in this order, and that second structure is for our import table. So we can expand that, and you'll see there are two values here, virtual address and size. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind with working with PE files on disk is that a lot of these values are actually intended as RVAs, or relative virtual addresses. So they're meant to be applied once the image, once the PE file has been loaded into memory. For example, the import directory, this virtual address field, 1A39C, that is a virtual address. That's intended to be added to the actual image base once it's in memory. So not really meant to be utilized or parsed on disk, and that sort of makes sense because it's the import table. It's needed at runtime, not necessarily when it's just residing on disk. Now, one, uh, well, another feature that O10 Editor has that I also appreciate very much is that it has over on the comments section the .r data, so the section, the segment that this falls in, and FOA. And I think that means file offset access, but I've not been able to confirm it anywhere in the documentation. Regardless, what it's telling you is that if you want to look at this structure on disk, this is the offset. So it's, it's made the conversion for us. Okay, so let's pause on that for just a second, and let's talk a little bit more about that. Below this Remember, we've expanded a couple of structures. We're in the image NT headers, image optional header, right? So below the image NT headers is the image, image section headers, right? This always follows the image NT headers. Inside of here will be an image section header structure for each section in this PE file. So it's a variable size. Now, we know that this is our data because our hex editor already told us that. Um, but if we needed to, we could figure it out. We could calculate. We have um, two things here, virtual address and uh, pointer to raw. Um, now, oddly enough, if you want to get the virtual address and the virtual size, then you have to look at these, these members. So the virtual address will be the base of where this section will be in memory. And then of course, that'll be the size. Um, so if we're investigating a virtual address or relative virtual address, then these are the two values we could use. We could take, well, we know where, where it's based at, and then if we add the size, we know how large the section is going to be. And if our address is within that range, our RVA is within that range, then we know, hey, it's, it's in this segment. Um, if we are investigating you know, an offset, a file offset, well, then we just use the size of raw and the pointer to raw. All right? And so this is also important because we're going to have to do a little bit of conversion here if you want to understand how to kind of easily go back and forth between thinking about things in memory, thinking about things on disk. So our pointer to raw is 12A00. I'm actually going to open up a sticky pad and use this just to keep track as we do a little bit of math. Um, another good example, text section, right? Very similar, virtual address, very common for the, the code section um, to be at 1,000 hex from the image base, and the pointer to raw, in this case, at 400 hex. And if we open up or look at the actual hex, here, it's, it's really touchy. Um, you'll see that at an offset of 400 hex in the file, that's where this actual section begins. Okay. If we go to our debugger, right, LM, remember our image base is C. So if we just do a, a look at the DB, defined bytes or dump bytes, uh, C, 1000, well, let's do 400, right? Okay, 400. Of course, there's nothing. It's all null bytes because that's the space between the headers up above and now this first segment. And if we adjust that to the expected virtual address of 1,000 from the image base, now we'll have the beginning of our section. So we can see those opcode bytes and the data bytes that so beautifully mixed together um, all laid out here. Okay, so where does that leave us? Well, let's kind of rebase ourselves. Um, the whole point of this was to talk about the import table. And if we go back to the image NT headers, the image optional headers, and we scroll down to those uh, image data directories, 
second entry will be our import table. And if we expand that again, we can see virtual address and the size. You don't really care. I don't really care about the size for this demo. Most important is the virtual address. This means that 1A39C is a virtual address. And if I wanted to, if I had to do the conversion manually, all I have to do is take that address, 1A39C, and subtract the base of the segment that it's going to be in, 14000. So that's the raw offset in bytes from the beginning of that segment to where this particular structure is located. Now, if I want to look at it on disk, I have to add to it the raw offset size, which was 12A00. And you can see that now that, that location on disk will be 18D9C. So that's basically the offset from the beginning of the file. You'll notice with 010, that is what is calculated for us, 18D9C. Which means that if we were so inclined, we could actually go to that offset. 18. It's probably an easier way to do this, but I don't know it offhand. 18D9C. All right, and that's these four bytes right here. That's the beginning of that structure. Now, um, what that actually maps to, and one thing you're going to have to bear with me, I actually find this kind of annoying with 010, is anytime you, you select any of these template fields, it navigates you there to there, it navigates you to that location. So, but anyways, if you look at then how it displays the import table, you'll see we're at a, we're at a, a start, right? This is the start in the file 18D9C. And there are those values that we were just looking at. So that, that makes it a little bit easier because now it's mapped that import table to this structure that helps us to understand kind of the remaining couple of key elements here. Okay, so we're almost done. Um, the first one, and I don't know why this is a dummy union name. All right, so the first one um, actually helps with the whole process of resolving the imports. And you'll see that this four byte value is actually another RVA. Now keep in mind the way that these are read, it's going to be little endian. So it's going to read the least significant bytes first and then the remaining bytes. So C4A301 actually becomes, let's clear our calculator, 1A3C4. Okay, so that's an RVA. We can tell that's an RVA because it you know, it's kind of got that same um, value as some of the RVAs that we've been dealing with. So if we wanted to look at that in terms of the file, well, we'd have to do our math. So subtract the, the section base, which is 14000, and now add the raw offset. And now 18DC4 is where we could go. Now that just so happens to be right here. And what you'll notice as you look at these, this looks like an array of RVAs, right? And it is. But what do they point to? Okay, well, again, we'll just do the math. That way I'm 100%. And our RVA is 1A4DC. We'll subtract 0, and then we'll add 12A00, right? 18EDC. Okay, so now we can scroll down a little bit. 18ED, and if we go to C, ah, there we are, right? Looking kind of familiar because we know that we are importing virtual alloc because we included it in our program, and we also saw that that's the first import according to our import table. Now, you'll notice that that didn't land us cleanly on the, the name virtual alloc, and that's because if you look at the actual Again, the way that 010 displays this, um, there is the imported API, right? We nailed it. It's exactly where it's located. And this first couple bytes provide insight into whether this is going to be import by name, as you can see here, virtual alloc, or by ordinal. And an ordinal is just a, a numerical way to represent the same API. Uh, it, it is used often enough and can actually avoid then giving you, you know, when you're analyzing a program, it, you know, if you're looking at it, instead of seeing import virtual alloc, you'd see import ordinal, whatever it is, 10, 
right? So it doesn't stop anyone from figuring out what the import is. It just maybe takes a little bit longer because you might have to look it up or have a tool that perhaps does that for you, right? So you have this word value, this hint, and then in this case, either the ordinal value or the name, right? And so now it can go through that array of RVAs to resolve all of the imports. And if you've ever looked at a PE file in a hex editor, you know, you'll see these, you can dump these with strings. You can see that they're all sort of kind of related here. Uh, that's because this is how the structure in particular works. Okay, what other structures are here? Well, of course, those RVAs are gonna continue to map as you might have suspected. But if we go back to the original structure, right? So kind of the, the, the main import table, we now have the timestamp, no value here. I don't know offhand why that's not populated. Oftentimes you'll find in the documentation that it'll say, hey, these fields may or may not be used. Maybe they were used at one time. No, they're no longer used. Maybe there's a certain compiler flag that has to be set. I don't know. Um, there's no value for forward or chain, but then there is a value for name. And again, you'll see off to the right that O1O's already resolved that for us. So we could do the very same thing that we've been doing. This is an RVA. If we subtracted that, calculated it to the file offset, 19028, you'll see 19, a little too far, 19028. So there's my column and there it is, kernel32.dll. So there's the name. Okay, the last one is the first thunk. And hopefully this value looks familiar because that's the beginning of our import directory. There is, or that, that section, 14,000 hex, 12A00, right? So if we navigate to that beginning of that section, 12A00, that basically is the pointer to raw. Let's scroll up. And you'll notice that while there are values here, um, they are not the function pointers. These are all RVAs that point back to each one of these import structures here, these image import by name structures, right? And we can actually calculate one just to, to prove. Let's go, whoops. Oh, this is really touchy. Okay, so here we have um, 1A4DC, probably sounds familiar because I think we already calculated this one. 1A4DC, and we'll subtract. Oops, got to go back to the calc. We'll subtract 14,000 hex plus our raw offset, 18EDC. And And there it is, 1.8 EDC. I clicked on virtual free. I didn't recognize that, but there's virtual Alex, right? So there's 1.8 EDC. So those, those just get overwritten during load time in order to resolve the function pointers, right? So here we go. There is the, that, that section base, and there's all those function pointers. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a better insight into how import process works. And in, in particular, the internal structures that you find within the PE file. Um, if you are working with malware or anything that requires you to dump images from memory, to extract them from memory, you're likely gonna have to deal with this or you're using tools that are helping you with this. They're oftentimes reconstructing the import table and maybe even rebasing the image. Because keep in mind, if I were to dump this image from memory, where are all my sections? They're at their virtual addresses. So they're at an offset of 1000 hex in image. And if I just write that to write to disk and then hand it off to a tool like Ida, it's going to look at the pointer to raw, not the virtual address, because it doesn't know that it was dumped from memory. And therefore all of your disassembly is gonna be incorrect. And so you need something to help you not only rebase the image, but also then um, you know probably fix the imports. So um, if you have any questions, comments, things you wanna share, please feel free to drop them in the notes. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, um, stay tuned. I've got another video here coming soon that will talk about the export table.